So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the RB polishing setup that I have right here and show you why you might wanna get one of these over one of the simple bench top ones that you might already have or be planning on getting. So let's get started. So as you might be able to see already, this is a huge setup compared to the little bench top one that I have over there, but there's a lot more to this one than that. So one thing right off the bat is this giant motor compared to the bench top version, which is bigger than the entire unit. So one of the main advantages to having a bigger motor like this is it will power through your stuff without being slowed down by you polishing. It has more torque than you can probably handle compared to the motor in the little bench one. This makes it a lot easier to polish things in general. So one other thing you might notice is this giant box because you could see the entire motor here. It's pretty much the same thing as that. You should be able to bolt this down and be good, right? Well, yes and no. This is here, so it will suck in all of the dust and all the pieces that come off of your buffs as you're using them. The dust and metal and everything that's coming off of this is really bad for you to breathe and get in your eyes and all that stuff. So if you have something like this, it will suck it up and it will be less harmful to you. And I'll show how all that works in a little bit. One other thing you might have noticed is all the stuff I have on top of here. None of this comes with either one of the polishing machines and you're gonna have to pick and choose the things that you need or want. So you're gonna need a polishing compound and this is the one that I like to use. So that being said about my polishing compound, there is a ton of other ones on the market that you can get and get good results from. And you're going to have to look into what does what and what goes with what metals and what finishes you're looking to get at the end of everything. So. Just keep in mind there is some research to be done after watching this. So you're also going to need buffs or buffing wheels and these come in a ton of different options and you're kind of going to have to look into those to see what you're looking for for your finishes because each one will give a different finish. So you can get things like this that it's multiple sheets that are kind of tightly put together. You can get a you can get some like this that are very similar but this is a softer material or you can get an extremely soft material. So this is something that you have to play with and research more based on what you want to get out of your buffing. And there's even these that will give you a nice matte finish on whatever you're working on. So for the inside of rings, you're gonna need some things like these. And this makes it a lot easier to clean up the inside of rings. So this is another great tool to have. It is a rake and this will make it so you can remove the polish buildup from your buffs. Uh, basically, if they get just too worn out or too much caked into it, it'll start to actually scratch your pieces and you can remove it all using this. You can also prepare your brand new, like hard, really hard buffs to make them all soft on the outside and usable. So another must have thing for polishing is these little heat resistant silicone protectors. You can get them in leather and all different types of things, but you basically want these because when you polish something, it gets extremely hot from all the friction and it will burn your hands. So if you use these, it'll cut down on it, transferring the heat to your fingers. You can still feel the heat through these after a while, but these help so much. If you don't want to get something like this, you can get some of these wraps like this. It's, I think it's alligator skin is what it's called, but I'll have links to everything I'm talking about in the description if you're looking for any of it. But yeah, this you just wrap around your fingers and it will also help keep the heat away from them for a little bit. But things are still going to get hot. So I usually just keep a cup of water or a bowl of water near me. And if the piece gets way too hot, just dip it in there and then start it up again. You adding a little bit of water into the mix of everything won't really matter. So before we actually start polishing anything, I want to show you a little bit more about the RB polishing setup and thank them for sending this over to me since RB was nice enough to send this over to me free of charge to be able to make this video and use this in future projects. So thank you guys for sending this over. So with this huge box here, this lid does come off. There are three screws. There's two on either side over here and one in the back. I already removed them before doing this. So I can just pull this up and put it back here. So now we have a better look over the entire thing. So as you can see, there's a light on it also. It doesn't come with the light bulb, so you're going to have to get one of those, so keep that in mind. It does, though, come with the filter. So here is the filter for all the dust. 
and these are replaceable, obviously. So inside here, there is a little turbine motor that will suck everything away and basically make sure it gets all caught in the filter and then blows air out the side. A very simple setup, but this all works and it's very sturdy. Everything is made out of nice, heavy sheet metal, but the entire unit itself isn't super heavy, which is nice too, if you need to move it around a lot. So now I'm just gonna put it back together. All right, so now we can finally start polishing. I'm gonna show you on this little one first and just show some of the problems that you might have with a benchtop setup like this. And don't get me wrong, these will work and you can get a lot done with these. And there are options for you to do other stuff, but once you start doing all that, it starts to add up in price to the point where you could have just bought one of these outright and had a much better motor. So it's really up to you and your budget, but let me start with this. All right, so when it comes to this little one here, you're going to want to bolt it down. If you just leave it as is and don't do that, it's going to move around a bunch. And when you press up to get your polishing done or anything like that, it's gonna lift and it could be actually really dangerous. And you're gonna end up with your hand on top of it holding it in place and you kind of want two hands to polish things. So I bolted it down using the little things I have all on my desk so I can mount stuff. So to start out, we're just going to use one of the buffs that I've already used. You can take this and screw it on if you wanted to. And that does work. But really, just turn it on, take this, and put it on. So with it going like this, I'm just going to take a little bit of my polishing compound and add it to it. One thing before we start doing anything else, make sure to put on a mask or some sort of ventilator setup so you are not breathing in the dust. Also, some safety glasses because if things get flung up or anything and hits you in the eye, it's going really fast and it's probably gonna damage your eye. So be very careful. So now that I have the buffing compound and everything on there, I can start polishing. And I'm gonna polish up this little flannel ring that I made. You wanna stay within this region of your polishing wheel. So if you go too high, it will kind of push down and it could shoot your piece down and if you go too low it can rip it out of your hand so you want to stay within a certain little area here so you just want to kind of go back and forth on it and roll it in your hand if you really want to get like a deep scratch or something out if you take this and push up with it it will cut faster and harder and take out scratches you also don't want to catch any edges so you wanna be very careful when doing side. So you can see it's taking on a very nice shine. It's dirty though, because the polishing compound will get on everything. As you can see, it's all over my finger protectors, but this ring is looking really nice. But we will still need to do the inside. As just a sample, I'm going to polish a little bit of this to show a contrast. So here's the non-polished area. As we turn, here is the highly polished spot. So as you can see, it does a fairly good job. So one major drawback to using one like this is it gets dust everywhere, like absolutely everywhere. And if you're using a different types of polishing compounds, you're going to be spraying it all over your entire work area. Like Red Rouge will get on everything and you good luck getting it off of everything. So a dust collector for this is a must, unless you're doing it outside in an area that you just do not care about. And still, you're going to need to use some sort of ventilator or mask and glasses, and your clothes are going to be covered in all the dust from this. So this is all the dust that I just swept up from that little bit of polishing. And yeah, it makes a mess, like I said. So this is one of the big draws to having the other type of machine. So now we're at the RB machine and there's some things about this that I thought would need to be changed because like vibrations and stuff like that. And I was completely wrong. So this doesn't have feet on it. So you can just slide this around, which you would think a vibrating motor would make this kind of move around and you're pushing on it and stuff like that. And you're gonna wanna like bolt it down or something like that. Yeah, you don't need that. It has rubber, like basically shock absorbers around it. And 
that does the trick there. And this is heavy enough that when you're pushing on it and everything for polishing, it doesn't really move. So it just kind of works. And I'm pleasantly surprised about that. So to turn this on, there's a switch on the side and it'll turn it on like so. It is a lot louder because it has a fan inside of it and it is a different motor. You can take this and put it on. Remember, this is the same exact one. I'm going to add a little bit of polish to it. And here is that same mountain range ring that I did just a little polish on. So I'm going to just do another spot on it and see how quickly this takes care of the polishing. Yeah, so this one, it puts a polish into things extremely fast. And I can feel the heat through this one already. When I was doing the other uh, machine, I couldn't feel the heat coming through at all. So look at that, I have a complete shine all the way around this now. The copper in this already was textured. If I really wanted to, I could polish that down, but I wanted the texture to stay in there. One other thing you might notice is there's strings and stuff over here, and it's because everything is getting sucked into this area like it's supposed to be, even the little strings and whatnot from our polishing pad. Like if you look at this ring, it's kind of scuffed up from me resizing it. So let's see what how quickly it can fix this. So look at that, you took out just about all the scratches in that area. It is getting really hot as I'm doing this though. It's cooled down by now, but... So it's already coming out really good and taking away that little flat line I had in it with a bunch of scratches. There are still some here and there, but you can see that it's polishing up really nice. This did get, like I said, extremely hot, so I had to bring in some water to dip it into. But yeah, it works really good. So one other kind of important thing to keep in mind when using buffs and stuff like that, even if you're using the little ones on the flex shaft, is you only want to use the one compound on that buff. If you mix them, you'll never get it to work right. It's like mixing a coarse and a fine grit together. You're not going to ever get the fine grit again. You're going to get to whatever the coarsest one is. So make sure to only use that one on the one buff and make sure that you mark it. Basically, you could write on here what it is, throw it into a Ziploc bag, and you can keep the buffing compound with it so they're never apart. And don't store the multiple buffs of different types of compounds in the same bag because they're going to cross-contaminate. Um, I did want to show using the rake on this. Um, it has some polishing compound in it and whatnot, but I'll show you real quick how to even use it. And it's pretty simple. Basically, just turn it on, grab your rake, and and the same place where you would polish at, you would just run the rake across. Then go ahead and turn it off and let it slow down. It will basically clean off any hard spots and you can see everything's nice and soft again on here. It didn't really have any hard spots, but still, but still same thing. So let's take this off, just unscrew it. And then I'm going to put on one of these so we can do the inside of a ring. This is actually wood here, and if you just throw it on like I did before, it doesn't really line up straight. So just try to get it as tight as you can by hand. Also, you'll notice that this actually sticks out past where the uh, vacuum system is, so you will get a little bit of dust out here. So go ahead and turn it on. You can see it's going. I just kind of pushed it, and now it is 
completely smooth and balanced. Add some polishing compound to it. So now I'm just going to take this and polish it up. So here's the inside. It's not the best polish. It still has some lines and stuff in there. It's mostly due to I didn't really clean this up beforehand. So this is them after their quick cleanup and I just used some soapy water and washed off all the polish. You can also use an ultrasonic cleaner, which I also have, and it makes quick work of any polishing compounds. And it's probably one of the best ways to get it off and out of all the cracks. So let me go over some safety stuff real quick, just in case you don't already know them and you plan on buying one of these. I don't want you to hurt yourself. So this is your polishing zone here. Basically keep pieces within this range and you should be safe as long as you don't catch an edge on your piece. And if you're pushing too hard and catch an edge, it's going to rip it out of your hand. So for instance, with this ring here, if you're holding it like this with all of your fingertips and it rips it out of your hand, you're probably going to be fine. If you are like this and holding it in your hand, you're probably gonna break a finger. Hopefully it pulls it out and it slides and hits the plate here, but there's a good chance that you can hurt yourself if you hold it some weird way that it will like lock onto your fingers. So another thing is I showed finger guards only for my fingertips and this stuff to only wrap right around your fingertips. Do not wear gloves when dealing with this. If you wear gloves and your glove gets caught in here, it's going to take your entire hand with it and you can break fingers, you can break your hand, you can get real messed up because this, this is strong enough not to care what is going into it and it will just pull it in. So be careful. <laughs> so one other thing is do not polish chain using one of these. It will rip it out of your hand most likely and get caught on this and fling it all about and whip you extremely hard and it will hurt you. So do not do chain. You can use different size buffs, like all the ones I've been showing in this are four inch ones. You can use smaller ones like these, you can use bigger ones, whatever will fit in here basically. Just keep in mind the bigger it is, the faster the outside edge is going, and the harder it is to control, and the more it's going to cut away on your piece. So if you have a really big wheel, like the maximum that will fit in here and you'll be able to get into, it's going to be going much faster than a four or three inch. So I suggest starting with a four or three inch buff set or buffs and then work your way up if you can or just stick with these and they should be able to take care of whatever you throw at them. So that's pretty much it for this video. It's just kind of showing off what this tool can do and its benefits versus a desktop or bench version of one of these. But it's totally up to you if you are wanting to get one of these. I have links in the description, and if you do purchase anything, I get a small kickback, which is nice, and helps support the channel. So, thank you if you do that. So let me know in the comments below how you're polishing your work, and if you think you might want to get one of these in the future. Like this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my channel so you get notified whenever I make a new video and put it out. I try to do it about every week. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!